In this video, I wanted to talk about something. I uh, I posted a uh, a little blurb on my politically incorrect art and music um, Facebook group today, talking about something that, um, that I've been thinking about for a while about how um, uh, basically it's about third wave feminism and how I think the riot girl movement of the '90s uh, did more harm than good. And this is coming from someone who. I'm a pretty big 90s alternative fan, uh, whether it's fucking Sonic Youth, uh, you know, post-punk indie type stuff, to like um, Electronica, like Orbital and Underworld, to like hip-hop, um, like Outkast, you know, so I'm a real big 90s fan, real big influenced by it, um, but I was never a huge fan of the Riot Girl scene, you know, I think it's, I think that's around the time that, um, you know, feminism sort of, like, took a turn for the worse and became toxic and embarrassed itself. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different because I'm not just going to, like, just talk off the top of my head. I'm basically just going to, like, read verbatim what I wrote earlier and then add, probably add a little bit to it, but... <clears throat> Let's, um, get that out of here. Uh, let's just go right into it. So basically, here goes. <clears throat> the Riot Girl movement of the 90s was one of the worst aspects of the 90s alternative movement. And this is coming from someone who pretty much loves 90s everything. It partially labeled itself as a movement to bring to light the uh, marginalized voices of lesbians and women of color. But second wave feminism already supported these voices. The right to vote achieved via first wave feminism at the turn of the century wasn't just for white women, it was for all women. The workplace pay equality and sexual harassment laws achieved in second wave feminism in the 60s and 70s covered all women, not just straight whites. Therefore, the giving voice to lesbians and women of color distinction. <coughs> In the 90s third wave was completely unnecessary and this can be seen as the first time that feminism started to turn from legit issues to the toxic I'm a career feminist I have to see the oppressive patriarchy in everything or I'll be out of a job nonsense we have today sexual harassment in the 70s used to be about actual sexual harassment like being groped molested or raped not you looked at me wrong sexual harassment or you sent me flowers. Sexual harassment. The gender pay, the, excuse me, uh, the gender pay gap is a myth. Do the research. Mansplaining and manspreading are not oppression. Catcalling might be annoying, but it's not against the law. Get over it and fucking get a life. There's people getting drone bombed in Palestine and kids dying of third worlds, and all you care about is a guy taking up too much space on the subway and a construction worker telling you you look beautiful. Um, I'll paraphrase this a little bit. Obviously, uh, there are circumstances um, where construction workers and, and other cat callers are being more derogatory. Uh, I'm not really condoning that um, in hindsight. I mean, like, seeing like, oh, you look fucking hot. I want to touch those jelly rolls or something like that. I mean, you know, uh, you know, not condoning that sort of thing, but really, I mean, is it is it a, is it a legal issue? It's just like you know, just just fucking ignore it. Just get on with your life. Like it's 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 a free country, and people can say stupid shit if they want to. It's like big deal. It's like it shouldn't like get to you. And I hate how like fucking a big thing that like they'll use these days in much like feminist circles is like okay, because most of third wave feminism has to do with. <clears throat> Like, you know, because in the first and second wave, it was about actually overcoming some oppressive obstacles. The first wave was about, you know, being allowed to vote and to be, be considered on the same level as a, as, a, as a male, basically, and the right to have abortions, which, um, actually, I don't really agree with abortions. I am pro-life, I'm pro-choice, but really, I mean, personally, I'm pro-life. I believe that abortion is murder. But I do believe in the person's right to choose, so I am pro-choice. But anyway, the second wave feminism was about, you know, uh, ending sexual harassment, like legit sexual harassment, like I said, in the workplace, and, um, and uh, getting paid the same as men. 
So, the, you know, first and second wave feminism were for legit causes. The third wave feminism is where it goes toxic. And I think that, like, one of the worst aspects about modern day feminism is that, like, it's all about just, it's these career feminists, basically, like I said earlier, who are just trying to, like, you know, justify their, their stupid careers as career feminists by just going around and, and, and looking for oppressive patriarchy, you know, where it does not exist. So, in, in case, like, Gamergate, like, video games, like, Anita Sarkeesia saying that, like, um, you know, oh, video games are sexist because in Grand Theft Auto, you know, uh, you can go around, like, uh, punching women or, or killing women and stuff like that, which is, which is bullshit, first off, because in games like Grand Theft Auto, you can go around, if you want to, you can go around killing anybody. You can, you can, like, you can punch a man just as easily as you can a woman or whatever. I'm not making an excuse for, like, you know, violence, but, but it's just, like, it's a fucking video game. It's like, you know, rather you... People like gamers get you know their violent aggressions out in a video game than in real life. You know what I mean? So it's like you know, it, it's not it, it's artistic. You know, it's it's just aesthetic choice. You know, it's not like actual fucking oppression. You know, it's not like they're actually like these women are actually being punched in like real life. And it's like, um, but they'll be, they'll make the excuse like, oh well, it's oppre oppressing me psychologically. It's oppressingly, oppressing me mentally and emotionally. Well, then don't fucking look at it. Just don't fucking play the video games. Just, uh, you know, do something else. Oh, hey, um, I just wanted to uh, add an uh, interjection um, to the video I just made. Um, talking about um, another issue about Gamergate that like uh, people like Anita Sarkeesian, not, Anita Sarkeesian were, were complaining about was that the, supposedly they were being like sexually objectified in a video game like that has any fucking relevance to anything because it's a fucking free country, you know. It, because it, it's someone's artistic creation, you know. It, it's not like your woman are being literally like objectified, like or like literally being oppressed. It's like it's someone's fucking creative, um, creative work. You know, it's, they're free to fucking create and say what they want, or they used to be. You know what I mean? Um, and so, like, or people, feminists objecting to, like, Laura Croft looking kind of scantily clad, which is not that bad, honestly, like, you know, oh, you can see her legs and her, and her bare belly, like, oh, oh, fucking shock horror. Um, but it's just like, like I said, it's a free country, you know, um, artists are allowed to, like, say whatever the fuck they want, it's a, you know, it used to be about free speech and free creation and whatever, you know what I mean? And it's like if if a if a video game developer wants to develop a video game, in which um, the main character is a completely naked woman, you know, with her breasts hanging around, hanging out like an Amazon woman, you know, who goes around. The whole point of the video game is that she goes around, you know, finding other uh, uh, scant, you know, naked women and fucking in, fucking them up the ass, you know, with like a strap on. You know, that's the video game developer's uh, choice. They have the right to do that, and like, and, and you have the right to like, not like it and object to it. But that's where it ends. You know, you don't have the fucking right to like take it to a legal level and say like, this is something horrible and needs to be fucking stopped because it's a fucking free country. Okay, it's a fucking free country, bitch. Anyway, got a little off subject here, but getting back, uh, where did I leave off? Okay. So there's people getting drone bombed in Palestine and kids dying in third world and all you care about is a guy taking up too much space on the subway and a construction worker telling you you look beautiful. Last I checked, women take up a lot of space on the subway with their big purses and getting compliments on one's appearance used to be a positive thing. Who gives a fucking shit? Get over yourselves. If men were getting catcalled by women, we wouldn't give two fucks. We'd probably just laugh about it. And honestly, like, I mean, partially because, like, men will fuck anything that fucking moves. So it's like, you know, you could probably do that for, like, two, three centuries straight of just, like, being, of men being catcalled by women. And we, and we would never fucking give a shit. I guess that's just the fundamental difference between men and women. But it's like, but I understand, you know, women are different. And it can be annoying being catcalled, but just fucking get over it, man. You know, just, just, like, laugh, laugh it off fucking get on with your lives you know if, if you're gonna sit around and complain about 
so I've got allergies today. If you're gonna sit around and complain about something as petty as like you got cat called, it's like you've got no fucking life. Okay, um, get back on it. By the way, Second Waivers made a big deal out of smashing the patriarchy by burning their bras. That was like the 70s equivalent of nude protests today. No one gives a shit if you wear a bra or are going nude. It's not smashing anything. But at least Second Wave Feminism fought for the rational things I outlined earlier. <clears throat> Obviously I don't mind women being in the music scene. Kim Gordon, when she wasn't dodging out invisible signs of the patriarchy, like a riot girl Don Quixote, actually contributed some good non-political surreal stuff like Shadow of a Doubt in the 80s and returned to that laid-back approach in the 2000s. Now, of course, um, I'm talking about uh, Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth. Alternative rock band Sonic Youth. So, what the fuck happened in the 90s? Stupid, immature, mentally ill riot girls perceiving invisible problems and making a big deal out of it. That's what. I love Sonic Youth, but Kim Gordon's periodic bitching about the patriarchy and blah 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 often made me wish she wasn't in the band, or was replaced with Laisha Sandler from Stereolab. Though there was that periodic socialist bullshit with Stereolab's lyrics sometimes, so yeah, scratch that. Maybe Darcy from Smashing Pumpkins instead. Maybe that's why in many ways I think Smashing Pumpkins is a better band than Sonic Youth. More top-notch musicianship, more eclectic, and Billy Corgan is an un-PC conspiracy theorist who goes on Info Wars all the time. Not that I'm like huge about Info Wars, uh, I have some issues with it, but you know, still uh, I, I admire his, his guts. Um, and I still like Sonic Youth a lot, um, but just like, you know, I think they're an innovative band, I, I enjoy all the, all the tunings and the melodies and such, but like, just, Kim Gordon can really get on my nerves sometimes. <clears throat> but yeah, there's plenty of great female singers who don't buy into the, uh, third wave feminism nonsense. The Carpenters were great, I love Mazzy Star, and I love Bjork. Notice that Bjork doesn't taint her edgy, innovative avant pop with bullshit third wave feminist nonsense. That's a beautiful thing. So, that's just a little something I wrote there. Um, I think it pretty much, um, you know, expresses the, base, the basics of what I was trying to go for. I don't think I really need to explain it more than that. So, uh, yeah, there you go. If you enjoyed that video, why don't you fucking subscribe right here, the world in my hands, oh, the fucking world, I am the fucking Rothschild elitist and the world is in my hands, and up here is a video about reptilians, the chemtrails, or the Rothschild Illuminati satanic pedophile ring or what the fuck ever, and right here is a music video or something or it could be anything, I don't know, I make all kinds of shit. Uh, blah, 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 that's all, folks.